This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Bacon Sale. I grilled a mean steak. It was average. <laughs> I oh, normally oh, God. <laughs> I, I normally grill my bacon, but now I'm running out of questions to ask it. <laughs> oh. I grilled a chicken for 20 minutes. He still wouldn't tell me why he crossed the road. Was that the same joke as the bacon one? Oh, pretty much. Dad, <laughs> stop. <laughs> get more. Here we go. It took, oh. us, it took us 20 seconds to get the mean joke. I have, a, I have an entire. No, I got, I got a few more. They'll come out later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas. Hell. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And I'm Zach. We'd like to thank you for listening to our last show, our David Lynch show. If you didn't get it, that's cool. Mysterious. We get it. A lot, of people, a lot of people don't. But filmmakers, filmmakers do. Thank you, Andrew, by the way, for joining us and uh, sharing your passion with the listener. Indeed. It was lovely to have you on. Um, and also a shout out to Chris Anderson, who says that David Lynch's best work is Gravity Falls. And then goes on to say that uh, Gravity Falls in, in the TV show, There's essentially, a- one of the characters was supposed to be David Lynch. And he was like, no. So they did. They hired somebody to sound like David Lynch. Yeah. Huh. I listened to it and I was like, oh, I can hear oh, yeah, it. Can I hear can it. hear it. Scott Sprague says, here I am commenting on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And I encourage all of you listeners to do the same. Remember when Willem Dafoe put those nylons on his head in a wild at heart, almost as unsettling as a racer head. Speaking of a racer head, this would have been a good follow-up show for the KFC episode. No, 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 please don't. No, nope. no one gets that, but please don't. No, nope. 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 And then finally, Mary Nolan Cox on Twitter says, I haven't watched anything by Lynch, but now I am intrigued. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, let us go. know. Someone's That's interest was peaked. Twin peaked. peaked. Jeez, you two. That started it. You too. <laughs> Why are you calling us out for dad jokes? You're the one. You're, that's not what we're talking about today. What are we talking about today, Zach? Well, we're firing up the grill and inviting all our friends over. Yep. We're going to have a grilling show. Not just grilling, though. This is a summer barbecue show. Backyard all barbecue. All terms that we're using probably incorrectly. You know, a oh. lot of barbecue at a barbecue. Guys, hold on. I got to turn on the Yacht Rock playlist for hey. this one. <laughs> is that Huey Lewis? <laughs> no. Seeing as it, how this episode is going to air on the 4th of July. Perfect timing. We thought a backyard barbecue show just sounded good. Delicious. So we're going to be enjoying this, uh, eating this food today. And we thought, hey, let's take 21 items yeah. commonly found at a regular backyard barbecue. Right, nothing too crazy. We ain't getting fancy here. Nah, nah. We just got 21. <laughs> nah. There are at least two things on here that are fairly fancy. What? Are there? I You'll have to so. let us know. You'll have to let us know what fancy is. Uh, so we, we're gonna, we have 21, which means to sell it. we're going to be <laughs> ranking them. <laughs> we're going to give a tier one for the highest, seven tier ones. Seven tier twos from the middle, and then seven tier threes. I really the struggled with this one. There's some of the tier three that I feel awful about. Me too. I, I gotta say, this of all the tiering shows we've done is the Stop first time it. I can honestly say okay. that I have um, like fourteen tier ones and seven tier twos. Well, it's food and no tier threes. <laughs> like this you have is, no tier yeah. threes. This might be my favorite. That, tier I had like maybe okay. one or two tier threes that deserve to be there. Everything else, I'm like, it's As, all now, tier one. Yeah. The way I'm playing this game, and I'm sure you guys are doing the same thing, is we did this similarly on our Thanksgiving show. It's like, hey, what's cooking? And I'm going down the row of people, and I'm grabbing stuff for my first plate. With that tongs, might be please. my tier With one. Stop uh, using your hands. I put my hands out there, my my fingies. No, don't even say fingies. And I put the yours. olives in the the ranch on my fingies okay your fingies have been too big for that for years <laughs> big olives <laughs> oh yeah the jumbo kind tiny fingers <laughs> yeah. but, yeah, so but so i'm going with oh here's my first plate this would be my priority here that's how i'm doing it so i don't feel as bad about not picking something like, a, like you said that's a tier one it's a yes. priority to put on the first serving on your paper right. are, plate are, are, that's going to soak through and fold over <laughs> as you're trying to eat as i'm sitting in my on lap, your lap yeah. <laughs> and trying to use the the plastic <laughs> utensils to cut your food so messy yeah what about you joel are you kind of doing the same thing yeah, yeah this is going to be a, what am i going to get first when i get my plate although i tell you what i i, I kind of cheated because we have a couple different meats on here yeah more and, than a few and i thought well i, w- I don't want to just fill up my plate with meats so I, I imagined an alternate universe where that is the main dish being Hold served up. and how i felt about it so if joel could travel to multiverses <laughs> i'd be going to so many barbecues you just eat meat <laughs> like uh, you other could things too you could save the world <laughs> No, I couldn't. I'd mess mm, things up. I'm going to eat steak this time. The butterfly effect doesn't affect hot dog eating. <laughs> what about you, Zach? I, you just feel bad about I, making things tier three. I, I went through the list and went, I'll do the, the Thanksgiving method. And uh, I looked at the list and went, that's disappointing. And I threw it away. Whoa. And I said, I'm just going to go with my heart on this one. Well, your heart's going to stop if I you went eat through. all that food. So <laughs> and It almost did. Actually, you know, in, in, in huh? the real world... Of, of not bacon sale this past weekend, I 
over eight uh, this type of food three days in a row. Oh, nice. I am very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I saw you at a barbecue. I was poking you in the sides. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went on the treadmill. <laughs> uh, there are pictures, actually. Yes, there yeah, are pictures, yes. Yeah. But before we begin, I do have some barbecue facts. Maybe I shouldn't say... <laughs> true facts about true. the barbecue. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say barbecue because there's grilling and there's barbecue. Again, the, the, the terminology. Right? It's, do you guys know the difference? But here's the thing. We're not going fancy here. We're going with whatever Appar- casually comes out of our mouth. We are. Yeah, but just casual. We could say we can call it a barbecue, backyard barbecue if we and, want. And when you say not fancy, do you mean you're going to a barbecue, someone else is cooking, and you're, you're like, is this extremely well done? Like, what happened? Is this charcoal that I'm eating? Could be. Okay. Well, I mean, do you guys like backyard barbecues? Oh, of course. Like, if someone says, hey, we're doing look, a barbecue. Look, according to everyone else, I don't like America, right? Because I don't like parades. <laughs> I don't like fireworks. I don't like any of that stuff. In the, in the quote, that's going to be a court. It's going to be dot, dot, dot. I don't like America. <laughs> when I Maybe I'll just Twitter. leave that there. But barbecues are a national treasure. Yes, they are. Right. I get excited whenever I, someone says, hey, we're doing a, a backyard barbecue. Sure. We're going to be grilling up some stuff. I'm like, it's yes. food. It's good food. Yeah. It's so, summer food. So back to the barbecue facts. We uh, Two thirds of Americans own a grill. And also, and I mentioned this, but grilling is heating your food with the lid up, right? So putting on a hot surface. Mm-hmm. Barbecuing involves putting the lid down Whoa. and letting the air surrounding the food heat it as well. So almost uh, it's a it's a combination cooking method. Yeah. Well, so, two. I've heard it once said that if you're looking, you're not cooking. So if you're looking at the meat, if you keep lifting up the lid, you're not cooking it. Oh, right. but you, do you always close it? I close it for a bit, and then I'll go out after a predetermined time, then go back out there. Oh, okay. You ever, you ever drop the meat between the grill slats? Oh, it's the worst. Oh, I did that. It's a waste. Not the as worse fire as, comes up. Not as, worse oh. at, not as bad as dropping. We're trying to get a hot dog, and it rolls off onto the ground, and, oh. and then the dog comes by it and eats it, and then since it's hot, he has a bad reaction to it. That's a bad way to start a barbecue. Did this happen? That happened just recently. Oh, no. But at Now, this is maybe a question of dadhood. I don't know. But you mentioned how many of Amer- how many Americans have two thirds of Americans. Do you guys own a grill, both of you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And a smoker. It's a junior elite smoker. I only own the smoker. <laughs> I, t- I told my wife today that I just have the feeling that my forties are going to be the time for smoking. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just feel like I'm going to spend smoking all well, like you have like smoking meats. Well, you have eighteen choose, years choose, until that happens. Zach. Your poison. <laughs> Start watching World War II movies or smoking. But I just feel like I was like once I hit my forties, I'm going to just smoke meat all the time. But at a backyard barbecue, are you guys generally the one at the grill, or is someone else doing the duties? Nope. Sunday dinners at the grill, barbecues, not. My father-in-law is really trying to get me to go like to the grill. And mm-hmm. I'm like, ha, ha, no, you're better than me at it. I'm not going to do that. I'm trying to avoid it as long as is, I Is it too much pressure to be the barbecue yeah. guy? Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. But I, I have taken it on at most uh, Which is so parties f- now. It's so funny to me because I, everywhere I've ever had grilled food, even if it is a little overcooked, you're, you, you're never like, ugh, so-and-so overcooked it. You're just like, oh, this is nice. Thank you. I'll add more ketchup. Yeah. Well, whatever, you're never, <laughs> it's already ruined. But if I cooked it and it was even slightly wrong I, I would just be like, oh, i'm so sorry everything's everything i think i undercook chicken too much i like which medium, is bad because people overcook chicken too yeah. much no dude, i like medium rare chicken Whoa, no no <laughs> 165 degrees fahrenheit all right so over 74 million americans are planning to grill this weekend so when the show airs very time sensitive every fourth of july 150 million hot dogs are consumed in the u.s just and on the fourth of july yeah just by joey chestnut <laughs> And then 5% of the national beer consumption happens the weekend of the 4th, and that's 68.3 million cases of beer. Does that include root? Uh, no, no. Okay. that is just the Hilton residents <laughs> that are drinking the root beer. But yeah, uh, please be safe on the roads this weekend. And the, the first evidence of a barbecue is from Stonehenge 5,000 years ago. You're, wait, you're saying Stonehenge? Is a barbecue grill? Yes, exactly. It's you're actually saying big, if you put a, if you put a metal grate like on the, top of Stonehenge, like the dad like some charcoal beneath it. The dad of the druids, right? Okay. The Got dad all the of kids the druids. around. Yeah, the druid children around. <laughs> <laughs> that formation is actually like the prime heating. Everyone's formation. sitting around watching him grill it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it makes sense. It's historical. It's just getting his coals ready. It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> Car. That's all I got. That's good facts. Good facts. And uh, yeah, uh, we hope you play along with us as we go along. Like we said, seven tier ones, seven tier twos, and seven tier threes. Let's see what you got. First up, every good gathering of lots of people starts here at the veggie tray. <laughs> now, why does it start at the veggie tray? Because it's always it's gaming. It's right because there. you're waiting for the food to be cooked yeah. and you're hungry. All right. So what's the perfect veggie tray for you guys? What's the perfect mix? 
Mm, like if there's cherry tomatoes there, are you a little upset about no, that? No, I don't no. like those. I, I got no, and I get cherry tomatoes. Oh, no. oh I hate no. them. It yeah. wastes a sixth of my veggie tray. Carrots, <laughs> two, carrots. two sections yeah. of carrots, mm-hmm. celery. Yeah, I like. You eat the celery? I do. Mm. I, the green beans. Oh, green beans. That's fancy. Yeah, snap peas. No, snap peas. Snap peas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I go cauliflower, broccoli, snap cucumbers, peas. cauliflower, mm, cauliflower. If you, you get gassy, is that what I'm it just, is? No, I had it was an office event, mm. like it was, a, it was an office potluck, so mm-hmm. we were indoors, and someone brought a veggie tray that had cauliflower, and I'm not kidding, it smelled like yeah, death. I know, I know. for of uh, like at Cauliflower's least not two a, not days, a, not a pleasant smelling. You put that in this particularly, it, it was overly smelly. Like we had to fully rinse out, and then eventually just throw away the cauliflower, to burn it. She never lived it down. <laughs> She's like, oh, that's the girl that brought the stinky cauliflower. Oh, <laughs> they called her stinky cauliflower for the rest of her life. Ah, poor thing. I mainly go for the carrots, the broccoli, and the olives. And then I'll grab a cherry tomato or two occasionally. Mm-hmm. As long as it has like a nice ranch or dill dip. Yep. Those, are, those, are the, my, those are the ones I really enjoy. I like a good uh, not store prepared veggie tray. It's yeah. got some peppers in it, like, like green or red peppers. My, that's really fancy, I do. Though. I'll exactly. put cucumbers and peppers on there for my wife. She loves those. Yeah, cucumbers. cucumbers. This, is oh. a, this is a last minute uh, Save bring. Save for the vegetable show. <laughs> but <laughs> if, you, I, if I want to sound fancy, oh, vegetable okay. show might happen. Why, <laughs> we don't no, know. Show. Stop, Stop it. Stop knows? it. You're just wishing to his existence. Uh, but if you want to sound fancy, sure. you can call the veggie tray a crudité because that's French for basically a veggie tray. Veggie tray. <laughs> yeah, real fancy. <laughs> veggie tail. Yeah. However, man, this this was tough because it's great pre gaming. Yeah. But well, it's you, necessary. Have you ever gone to the veggie tray post yes. bar post yes. barbecue? Stop it. When that's only for the left. ranch. And the carrots are the, ranch. the carrots are a little wilty. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the sauce is kind of maybe bubbling a bit because it's been out yeah, the, the sun. Yeah, the celery's a little browning. Yeah. yeah. It's not a good time to go for the veggie tray. What do you give it, Joel? Well, I gave it a tier one on the Thanksgiving show. And much to my dismay, it got bumped down to a tier three on this one. Oh, wow. It's, oh, yeah. There because are multiple items on this list that have been featured on Bacon Cell before. Yeah. I, They're going to get different ratings. I do like the veggie tray, and I will pregame with the veggie, mm-hmm. veggie tray. If there's room on my plate, I will also put the veggie tray on there, but it's usually an off-plate item, so it yeah. got bumped down because it's not a priority. Is like on I mean, my it got bumped down, right? It's not like you hate it. No, right? I, don't, I don't hate. Yeah. I don't think I hate anything here. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. I give it a tier two because I think I will eat it. It is a mandatory appetizer. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's going to be in. But once again, I will not touch any of those carrots or the warm ranch dip after I actually get my actual (laughs) fixings. Veggie trays in this context to me are, they're like shopping carts in like a grocery store parking lot. Um, They run into your car. You have to like take care of them out of a social obligation, not because you actually want to. Uh, Like I feel like I have to get... Items from the veggie Understandable. Tray. You don't have to. I feel like I do for two reasons. One, I feel like I should eat vegetables because I'm about to do something very irresponsible. <laughs> two, I always feel bad when somebody brings something to like a barbecue and it doesn't get eaten. It's their fault for bringing a pineapple. No, <laughs> I, I feel bad, but this is a tier three in this yeah. context. Uh, in this this context. is a sad tier three because I don't think it deserves it because no. I, I like the veggie tray. I like dipping my no, carrots no. in the ranch. Mm, but there's so many better things on this list, honestly. Like... Hamburgers. Oh, we're just jumping right to hamburgers. Oh, yeah. The main event at many, many barbecues. Okay, so if you're the host, if you're cooking uh, the burgers on the grill, how many burgers do you, or how many patties do you put cheese on? Like, is there a number? Is there a ratio? I, I would because say you most, should, you should 90%. Ask, how much? 90%. Because there's some children that may not like it. My parents do not like cheese on their burgers. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Although everyone loves it but them. And my mom likes hers kind of more uh, rare. Okay. A little more rare. So... I know how my parents So you're like saying the, the should the grill master ask how people like their burgers done or should it just be here's a plate of burgers some have cheese if some don't If someone wants a special order you you can request it but generally sure. speaking just just take what you're given Okay I'm not a fan of Do we need to do a grilling etiquette show I'm not a <laughs> fan no. of less than cooked burger like medium well it should be good like you want to mm. cook it through Overcooked though, because burgers it, are so when you easy ground to beef, you ground whatever's on the surface that could have some contaminant into the entirety of the meat. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it is best that it's pretty well cooked through. Yeah. Uh, by the way, what do you guys put on your burgers? Generally speaking, you're at a backyard barbecue. What do you put on your burger? Mm. Barbecue sauce, lettuce, no. pickles, sometimes mustard as well. That's about it. Barbecue sauce and mustard. Mm-hmm. Intriguing. It's good mix. So generally, like whatever's on a like a Wendy's burger. What's up with that? So, uh, mayo, ketchup, so you mustard, do, you do go from some, lettuce, tomato. Some people don't want the mayo because you have to you actually use the knife for that. Bruh, mayo on both buns. Oh wow! Oh yeah. What? Wow. I'm Hawaiian. 
Toasted? What? Toasted? Hold on. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, here's my problem, though. Mayo on both buns? Both buns. Mayo on both buns. Both buns. Hold the white well, sauce, maybe, Both buns. A little bit thick, too. A little, bit, little bit of a lot of it. No. Oh, yeah. Mayo's good on a burger. Actually, I do yeah. mayo or miracle up on a burger. Oh. No, it's not <laughs> crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, then, now we're crazy? Yeah. Lettuce, lettuce, tomatoes. Um, but then I actually make a, a burger... Um, this is kind of like my specialty. Um, it's half ground chuck and half ground bacon. In now, you're the getting, oh, okay. now you're getting put fancy. it with some Relax. smoked gouda and then some, oh. some J dog sauce or barbecue sauce. Like on a the sweet bun. barbecue sauce. Sounds yeah. good. Sweet barbecue Sounds sauce. Real good. When yeah. are you throwing this barbecue for us? Uh, anytime I cook them this weekend. Okay. Um, I generally way, do them every fourth. Do you guys know where the name hamburger comes from? No. no, because a lot of people say it comes from Hamburg, Germany, the second largest city in Germany. But there's no certain connection between the food and the city. So the origin is relatively ambiguous. So there was a thing back in 1758 where they had Hamburg sausage and suggested to serve it on a toasted bun. And there's a Hamburg steak back in 1847, which was uh, served between two pieces of bread. But hamburgers gained national recognition in the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Oh, really? And it was very fancy, like, oh, look at this, this this ground up beef in between two patties. This is so revolutionary, which doesn't seem revolutionary to no. put hamburger between two patties or between two buns. But that's like it's amazing. People didn't do it before then. Well, and in fact, in World War One, there was uh, some anti-German sentiment. Mm-hmm. So they actually called it Salisbury steak. So whenever you see Salisbury steak, it's just a fancy name for hamburger. So one day I'm going to have oh, Sal- I know. Uh, Next time I go to a barbecue, I'm like, oh, can I have some Salisbury steak or, and some crudite? But now, for, for and the, I mean burger and veggies. For our context now, Salisbury steak is like the gross gravy yeah, the covered thing in the TV dinner. Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. just a hamburger in that but, gravy. Yeah. And then after the war, hamburgers be- uh, started to become more popular when White Castle actually started marketing them. As they the, made it popular. The small little sliders is what kind they of they never made... evolved from there at White Castle. No, because they're not that good. This is an absolute essential. I this is the first thing I'll put on my plate. You know, you get the bun, you go to the little fixins tray. You it's put perfect. the mayonnaise on. Yeah, that's no mayonnaise. You said, yeah, I heard no yeah. mayonnaise. And uh, yeah, this will take up about a third of my plate, and then I'll start putting some stuff on after. So this is number one. Hey, hey guys, hmm. hey guys, you can imagine my surprise when I saw James Bond making burgers in the park. Because he had a license to grill. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I thought it was going to be clever. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, so good. Here's the thing with burgers. Um, they are uh, Burgers at a backyard barbecue are always not as hot as I want them. Because either the meat's been out for a minute or <laughs> your bun is not. Like your bun just came straight from the bag. Yeah. There's just something about it that I always bite into it and go, hmm, this is lukewarm. Even still, I mean, this is uh, this is great. I always go for the burger first. Tier one. Okay. I would say tier one as well. I agree with you too. This is an essential. This is a classic. 100%. And it's one of the things I just really look forward to at a backyard barbecue. Like mm-hmm. I hope they have hamburgers. Oh, if they yeah. didn't, walk away. Well, it's no, not American. No, no, no. What, what, well, what would they have it's otherwise? Not Hamburg, Germany. <laughs> We'll see you later. All right. What about chips? Now, we did talk about chips. Uh, Quite a bit. Two shows. Pretty much at, yeah, shows. Pretty much at length on Bacon Cell episode 303, Bet You Can't Just Tier 1, and Bacon Cell 336, It Ain't Easy, Tearing Cheesy. Now, I think these are a wonderful complement to a barbecue totally. meal. But they do take up a lot of space on your plate for not a lot of... Uh, you can give. put them on top of anything. They you're, don't soak it up. covering your plate in chips? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Little Doritos. By the way, Doritos are easy to file. <laughs> you put those side by side. <laughs> to what's what's file? Ken doing? Oh, You're filing your Doritos. Just, <laughs> he's just filing his Doritos I'm, by flavor. I'm, I'm organizing my Cool Ranch and Natural uh, This one kind of looks like it has an A on it. It'll go in front. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you have a barbecue plate, granted, there's more savory food. There's better food. But if you don't have chips on that plate... It feels wrong. Except for sometimes they give you little mini bags and you have to do that awkward dangle carry underneath the plate. <laughs> oh, the dangle carry is oh, scary. Like someone yeah. brought the bag of bags? Yeah, 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 I brought the bag of bags. And so you got to hold that underneath your so plate. So would you rather put, put your fingies in a big bag and then put it on your plate? I feel like most often at backyard barbecues that I've been to, it's fingies in the big bag. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see a lot of bag of bags. That's more of like a picnic thing. Right. Uh, well, it's more, uh, I mean, youth activity barbecue kind of thing. You're going to get the bag of bags there. Yeah. Less, okay. less hands grabbing in there, less fingies. But no. I, I, hate that. I hate that. The, Why the, did I say that? <laughs> the, the awkward dangly walk. Yeah. It's so true. I, I do it all the time. 
I'd be like, how do I hold this cup as well? Hey, wait, oh. Too much food. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I normally do put my plasticware in my pocket. If I have a shirt pocket, it goes in the front, like a little pocket there. And you're a dad, so you always oh, do. Oh, totally. Yeah. And then, like, or in the back pocket. You don't have I, a Swiss Army knife Because carrying utensils. utensils along with everything else is just unnecessary. Yeah. So, Zach, what do you give this? I like chips a lot, but at a backyard barbecue, I, I don't always go for them. So, they're a tier two for me. I love them, but I am always willing to skip them if there are better sides. Tier two. I would agree. They're tier two. I like them. I enjoy them. There's varying degrees of, of good chips and bad chips, as we discussed. At a backyard barbecue, eh, good. Optional sometimes. Tier one, always there, always necessary. We didn't do two shows on chips for nothing. We didn't. They're That's why great. I got a tier two for two shows. Yeah, but we also have done no meat shows. So say We should do a meat, meat show. show. Yes, we should. <laughs> we have the but meat. But we have to do the meat and the oh, veggie oh. show like back, like back to back. Yeah, so it's like healthy. Just to like, yeah. which gets priority? Who mm. even knows? Mm. Next up, we have baked beans. Now, I like that you put the chips next to the baked beans, Zach, because a lot of times I'm using the chips to scoop so up the baked beans. That's what makes beans. the baked chips beans. better. An edible spoon. So Ew. Baked beans is a dish traditionally containing white beans that are parboiled, then in the U.S., baked in a sauce at low what? temperature for a lengthy period. That's why they're baked beans. They're I'm baked still back. Sauce. What do you yeah, take your Doritos? Par- like, yeah, like, parboiled. Oh, yes. Dorito fingies all up in the. In yeah. The oh, any baked chip. Beans? Any chip can become here's, a, a bean spoon. Here's Lays, the beauty of baked beans. Lays will to, snap in half in a baked bean. So go for Doritos. File them well. No, you, you get what? finesse. You got to do a little finesse on the, on the Lays chips. So here's what happens when you put baked beans on your plate. Soup. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, yeah, you're not just yeah. topographical no, it's like beans. Yeah. What it is, it's like, oh, am I eating watermelon? No, it's baked beans and watermelon. Am so, I eating a burger? Oh, it's a bottom half of baked beans. So you've got to be willing to soak like, it up. You have, like, the paper chinette plates. Those are those are doomed when baked beans arrive. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's funny. It's because there's no standard of quality for beans, right? It's like... But beans are American, Kent. In are fact, they? baked beans originate in Native American cuisine. Because beans are indigenous to the Americas. Really? In the 18th century, the convention of using American-made molasses as a sweetening agent became increasingly popular to avoid British taxes on sugar. Oh, I love beans now. We're not using their sugar over in British taxes. We're doing molasses here in the U.S. And after the American Revolutionary War, Independence Day celebrations include baked beans. They must include them by law. we celebrate our Independence Day. Our bushes baked beans. (laughs) Our independence. Pen beans? No. Nope. And to peendance day. <laughs> that didn't work. But <laughs> okay. Now my my brother he makes amazing beans. He got a okay. Recipe. He well, got a that's recipe. fancy. He got a recipe from my aunt. No, right. no, they're like you know just normal. Like, but then sometimes you get that like it's not even the bushes. Bushes are good baked sure. beans. Yeah. But they get the kind that's just kind of the, in the red sauce. It mm-hmm. looks like basically just little little oh. northern beans and ketchup. Yeah. Right. That's not great. Those no. are bad. And then they have like the crispy crunchy onions in there. That's not good no. either. Yeah. But the truth is, Kent, I will brave the soup because beans <laughs> are an essential on my barbecue They're going to be on your first plate, They right? are tier one. In every universe? Every universe, <laughs> baked beans are going on my plate. That is like, if I have any sort of barbecued meat, I there's, want beans there's next There's a universe where you baked just like beans. fruit salad, right? <laughs> You're still going to go for baked beans? Yes. Oh, wow. That is dangerous. Baked beans and fruit salad. <laughs> beans are beans are technically a fruit, remember? We talked about that in the fruit show. My head hurts. These are tier one. They're going on the plate regardless. They may not be the best tasting thing, but they're good filler. They're going on the plate and under the plate yeah. and around the plate. <laughs> and on your fingies. So, yeah, it's this tier one. I love baked beans when they are like the thicker yeah. kind. I, good we, luck, sir. Like uh, R&R Barbecue we went to recently. Sorry to be local. But uh, like they had the right consistency. I got like them to be a little bit thicker because mm. when they're watery and runny and gross, I don't like them. So these ended up as a tier two for me. Oh. They got they got bumped. Hmm. Yeah, uh, you don't like America now. That's crazy. Oh, I mean, Get a little bit of bacon bits fine. in there, a little bit of sausage. Yeah, <sighs> baked beans. What a- <laughs> America. Yeah, I've never heard you so passionate about <sighs> anything. Baked beans. <laughs> Next up, we have pasta salad. Pasta salad. Uh, I, now this this covers a range. I was going to say, does this is this, this depends also, on which weird neighbor brought it, right? Is this well, macaroni salad? No, because that's okay. my picture. So macro, oh, macaroni cucumbers? salad, generally speaking, yeah, uh, is a is a cooked macaroni with mayonnaise mm-hmm. and then like carrot uh, like carrot shavings in there. Uh-huh. I picture more of a like Italian dressing sort of. Then you have ones like with the, with the rotini, the curly yes. pasta where you have like the vinaigrette. It's got on the it. multicolor. With yes. the, yeah, the, the chunks of cheddar cheese in there. Chunks and of cheese, tomatoes. chunks of mozzarella, so chunks of pepperoni. there's a variety here. 
They can include such things as broccoli, carrots, baby corn, cucumbers, olives, onions, beans, beans, chickpeas, peppers, and Parmesan or feta cheeses. Like these are a pasta salad is whatever you have in your pantry that you can throw into <laughs> pasta. Sure. Really, yeah. Almost always served cold. Yes, you get a cold pasta there, and it is the cold thing on your plate for it sure. Is. Yeah. When I walk up to the food line and I'm like, okay, I got a burger, I got beans, I got some chips filed there. If I see that the pasta bowl is empty, even though I feel like it may belong on the first plate, I go, that's okay. The pasta salad isn't absolutely essential. No, no I would say no. Well, not to me. There's times when we go to a family barbecue on my wife's side of the family, mm-hmm. and it's basically the buffet is just pasta salads. Oh. Whole varieties of different types of pasta salads. Do you have favorites, though? Uh, a couple that I like more than okay. others. Yeah. So you're going to pass ones where you may not like, like I don't like olives, for example. And so I'm going to pass up the one with olives. I don't like the rotini one with the Italian dressing. Oh, I do like that one. I don't like that one because I don't, I don't feel like the flavors meld together well. No. It's like it should be a salad. Yeah, the noodles should not quite cook the right way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cold. and uh. Yeah. This one got bumped down to a tier three for me. Like I, I like it. I will eat it. But it's like a sad tier three, but still a tier three. I love like Hawaiian style macaroni salad, mm-hmm. and that's about where my pasta salad love ends. I think this is a this is a minefield for people's weird family recipe. <laughs> I, I I have had some pasta salad that I am like, oh no, why did I grab this? And then going back to my earlier comment, like I find myself scooping out the pasta salad of which there is the most. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, they made they they put hard work into this, and I'll scoop it and I'll eat it and I'll figure out why. So much of it is there at the serving table. This is a tier three. I, I just don't like most macaroni sa- or uh, Yeah, you don't trust your neighbors, basically. I, I just don't like most pasta salads. Okay. No. This was one of my few easy tier threes. Sure. I don't generally like pasta salads. Every time I get it and I eat it, I'm like, why did I, why did I waste plate space on this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could have like, chips. But I think it's for color and variety, honestly. It, it is like maybe everything I'm, else is like brown and tan. But almost every single time, I'm like, oh, there's that pasta salad with the with the Italian dressing on it, and I put it on there, and I'm like, why did I get this? Mm-hmm. I don't like this. It's like, I don't know, I don't know. It's just not good. Can I ask an honest question? And yes. this is a safe space. It's just the three of us here. And, oh, that's uh, it. Okay. No, no, no there's lots of listener listening do you ever get like macaroni salad and you take a bite and, and just for that half second your brain thought it was mac and cheese no, a little bit no. you're like no. I, so there's no cheese in there. I've, I've actually been in opposition to pasta salad for some time and it was just recently i went to a one of those hawaiian uh chain restaurants mm-hmm. and i got the pasta salad just came on the plate and i was like ugh, but i was hungry and i already eaten my my meat and my rice so sure. i was like fine i'll eat this too <laughs> and i went that's actually not bad Mm. That's actually not bad. Yeah. Mm. And so there's an exception there. But generally speaking... Meanwhile, a craft kid just had his heart broken because he's thinking he's getting mac and cheese. I always, like as a kid especially, I grabbed it and it's like, oh, this is mac and cheese. And there's no, no cheese nothing, whatsoever. Yeah. No, this well, is gross. This cold, clammy noodle. <laughs> Unrelated, but I feel like kind of a liar. Recently, we got some uh, cauliflower and cheese. Like it, It's made to look like macaroni and cheese, but it's actually cauliflower and, and? Chunks of cauliflower and cheese. And we told our kids it was mac and cheese. And all of them, the, after they took a bite, they're like, macaroni is kind of crunchy. And they were all kind of disappointed. I'm like, oh, actually, it's cauliflower. Father lied. I felt like a liar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like pasta salad lied to me. <laughs> we're going to taste good all together. It's nope. just inconsistent at it best. Is. It is. Yeah. This one has diced onions and peas. <laughs> Who puts, why, what, can we cut it with the onions and the pasta is salad? Is this a marble? I don't like raw onions. So that's a big yeah, deterrent. Oh. All right. Next up is corn on the cob. Are we talking a full piece of corn we're talking are we talking cut in half we're talking corn full piece of corn Oh, take it easy i you don't got, have enough room on my plate i need a half you corn, got, please fine you can have your half corn little thank guy. you <laughs> you take you take your Small two corn shaped skewers you shove those no bad one's boys taking in the, the time for the oh, corn. I you am. burn your fingies with no no corn. no, no, no. Corn skewers and your fingers don't get all buttery then that's oh yeah then your mom brings out an entire stick of butter just sitting there on a plate and, oh, you, and, then you, do the and you lay it on there and you do a little burnout and you just <laughs> and then you get the little the little curly hairs little in there curly hairs get in it. it's like oh we can't use this butter for anything else <laughs> And then and you sprinkle, pour way too much salt. You sprinkle a little yep. salt, and then it turns into way too much, or, or even pepper, and it's way too much on like one strip. And then also that goes on top of the corn, like in that little trough you've made. And, and your fruit it, salad. And it, and it goes under your plate, and you try and kind of roll the yes. corn. Barbecues are a mess. Can we just say that? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, like, and then after you get done with the corn on cob, it just kind of sits there mocking you on your plate, being like, oh, I'm taking up space, I, and you can't put anything I in. I immediately that's, get that's up. That's gross now. And that's why you go for half. Away. It's why you no go way. for half. 
when you guys do a barbecue, do you actually grill your corn on the grill or do you boil it? Boil it. Hot? Boil it. It's easier. You can also do the, uh, like, uh, wrap it in foil and throw that on the grill. Yeah. Well, so, and I was going to say, some people actually just put it on the husk on the grill. Because a lot of places. And then husk on the grill. They yeah. recommend just keeping the husk on and grilling it that way. Yeah, you can. Yeah. I think, I think just because it takes up grill space, um, it's easier to, you can also be cooking the corn while, you know, you're making the stuff, the meat on the grill. Yeah. What did the clumsy corn say to his friend? Oh shucks, <laughs> guys! I just barely came up with that. You just came up with that. I was probably a laughy ten year proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you What do you call a row of dolls burning on a grill? What What barbecue? Oh, oh wow. god, <laughs> that got dark. Yeah. Uh, by the way, after being picked, the corn sugar converts into starch. It takes only one day for it to lose up to twenty five percent of its sweetness. So ideally, you want to cook it on the same day it's harvested. Yeah, that's how you get really good corn. Does corn really have no nutritional value? I think it has some. I mean, it's good for soda. <laughs> Does that matter? No, it sure doesn't. <laughs> Are we worried about nutritional? Save for our nutritional value show. <laughs> no, please no, please Never. no. <laughs> uh, my kids absolutely love corn of the cob, like frothing at the mouth. Corn of the cob! Like freaking out when wow. we have it. I am not that excited about it. Really? I enjoy it. I think it's. I think it's very appropriate for summer barbecues. And Is it because be it's there. too dangerous when you're doing the dangly walk? Yeah, and it's I got my, I got my on chips hovering the, under. Uh, it's yeah. like that's hanging over the sides with the skewers, <laughs> or when one of the skewers falls out and then you accidentally like step on it. Those things are sharp. Don't bring skewers. Burn your fingies. No, you need the skewers because those yeah. are fun to stab in there too. They are fun, except, except for when you can't when, get. It's they too hard. They either can't get in, or they're, guys or they're too loose. Literally, this vegetable is ease of use, and you're making it more difficult. I love it. When I had braces and couldn't eat it, it was just de- devastating. I could, oh, I couldn't do it. It's the worst summer of my life. Are you all right? Tier you one. About that? Tier one. And I'm giving it a tier two. I love it. It would have got a tier one, but there's so many good things it's, here. It's so good. This so, is a tier, tier two. one. It's so refreshing. Even with the butter and the salt. <laughs> so much butter and salt. Do you guys ever do the, like, the elote with the, like, the mayonnaise yes. on it and, and like a chili powder? Uh-huh. I've never had it. It's I really want it. It's quite tasty. Oh, it's quite so tasty. Good. Yeah. I want to go to a fair Zach, right now. Zach, are you okay? Oh, I love this show You can so make much. it yourself. I feel like they no, gave you better braces just because you have an addiction. <laughs> Give me the corn. <laughs> corn is like the gravy of the barbecue. <laughs> I thought gravy was the gravy of the barbecue. <laughs> you have gravy at your barbecue? Sometimes. And the beans. Mm. Mm. <laughs> beans. <laughs> All right. Now we have coleslaw. Mmm. <laughs> what a delicious okay. name. This is from the Dutch this is from the Dutch term kulslala. Oh, <laughs> meaning cabbage salad. Slala. Cool. Hey, he was Indiana Jones, Kulsla. wasn't he? <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, I'm pretty sure a, that's a Star Wars planet. This is a side dish uh, consisting primarily of finely shredded cabbage with a salad dressing or condiment, either vinaigrette or mayonnaise. Plate waster, plate waster. Uh, this I was, oh. There was a, a 1770 recipe book that talked about this Dutch landlady who put strips of cabbage with melted butter or vinegar and oil on it. But since mayonnaise didn't come around until the mid-18th century, our modern coleslaw didn't come around until around then. But according to The Joy of Cooking, raw cabbage is the only consistent ingredient in coleslaw. Because people can do, once again, whatever they yeah. want with it. And they'll throw in <laughs> sour cream or they carrots, do. bell yeah. peppers, Pineapple sometimes. Miracle Whip. Why not? Hey. They also make something called barbecue slaw, which or uh, known as red slaw, which is ketchup and vinegar rather than mayonnaise. Yeah, red slaw is good. I no, truly, I is. like a coleslaw if it's on pulled pork sandwiches, which we're not including on this show. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, you got to have it, it as a part of but, a barbecue sandwich. But if it gets a little fraction, a little slice of that plate, ugh, no. no. Why would you put coleslaw on your plate? Why? I don't know. Like alone? To maybe, honestly, Why? to be nice because someone brought it. Again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Courtesy. No, they need to learn mm-hmm. that coleslaw is not an appropriate side dish. Are you going to judge them? Are you going to tell them? It's are an you... accoutrement on a pulled pork sandwich. Okay, it's let's a, say this. Topping. Joel, your aunt brings coleslaw every year for the past five years. Do you invite her back? <laughs> it's a story problem. <laughs> what do I get? What do I get on my birthday, <laughs> though? Do I get like problem. a card? You get $7 money? every birthday. I'm down with this. Okay. <laughs> That's, that's worth the coleslaw experience. Why? But I'm not eating if it. If you're getting $7 in a birthday card, are you inviting her to a dinner? Because she's family. Okay. And she, he's like, <laughs> okay, Olive Garden. <laughs> no, this is a tier three. Easy for me. Yeah. I do not think coleslaw belongs on my summer plate. But like you said, on top of a pulled pork sandwich, sure. Yeah. That's not a problem. Tier three. Oh, absolute tier three. Um, gross. Now we have grilled chicken. 
Grilled chicken. Now, we should clarify, originally when we came up with this list of 21, it was basically meats. Mm-hmm. And so we pared it down, pared it down, pared it down, and we said, okay, no, none of the fancy Like, stuff. we're specifically not including smoked food. There's a lot of smoked meats here that we're yeah. like, no, let's just not include that, because that's, that's we'll save it that for another time. For the meat show. When I picture grilled chicken, though, I picture marinated chicken. Yeah. Or, or like they, they uh, brush the barbecue brush sauce on. Brush the barbecue on, right? sauce yeah. on. Yeah. Which, was, by the way, don't no put barbecue sauce at the beginning, because the sugar will burn and make it taste yeah. kind of bad. Yeah. This is inconsistent, because it could be undercooked, it could be burned. Yeah. And so, but generally... Fantastic, I would say. I do also like, uh, I think for ease of use, it's kind of hard to cut a lot of meat with a plastic fork and a plastic knife. Oh, totally. Yeah. This especially, one, if you, though, especially if you don't have a table. Oh, yeah, like yeah. If you're doing it on your lap, if you're lap eating, like it's and a problem. you're in one of those retractable folding Fun chair fact, things. I hate lap eating. Like, I don't even like breakfast in bed because I prefer eating at a table and having my plate on a table. A little stability in my life when I'm eating. <laughs> you <laughs> you feel <laughs> Um, but sometimes this doesn't even need barbecue sauce. I think the taste is good enough on its own. And if it's like, depending on the size, you can just pick it up with a plastic fork and just eat it the whole piece at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. look like a, a dern fool. Uh, well, I'm at a family barbecue. Oh, so you look like a fool anyway? Yeah, anyways, oh, a dern <laughs> fool. Uh, this is a tier one for me. Whoa. Chicken I would, is amazing. I would agree. I, I do feel like people cook chicken way too long because I they, want, they yeah. want to make sure it's done. Understandable. Mm-hmm. Get a meat thermometer. They're very, digital meat thermometers are very easy to come by. You just stab it in there. Okay, that's 165. Take it off the grill. Perfect. And I think there's a variety of different flavors you can get from grilled chicken, but they're all pretty good. So I'm going to say it is a tier one. I'd say like barbecue is my go-to. Um, I Honestly, as a kid, I would request this for my birthday all the time. My birthday is in early June, and it just always felt like a good time to have... Uh, we do mm. like barbecue chicken salads, mm. right? You just have a nice bed of lettuce, and then you throw the barbecue chicken on there, and then crush up some uh, tortilla chips mm. and then just massive amounts of ranch dressing. Yep. And it's delicious. Or tomatoes. Sounds great. That said, uh, on this list, heartbreakingly ended up at a tier two. Is it because this will be your Why second you plate? Why your birthday? It's because I, yeah, I, you I'm never going to grab first. first. I'm right? never going to go okay. for it first. I understand I'll that. be like, oh, there's some chicken left. Uh, maybe I'll grab a piece. But I'm, I would go for a burger before a grilled chicken. See, and I think it's because of ease of use, for mm-hmm. sure. And so far, I'm putting like the chicken on top of the burger right now. It's inside the bun with the, with the chicken. Now, you right? could, yeah, bun. just make a chicken sandwich if that's an option. That mm. sounds delicious as well. Yeah. Next up, we've got cornbread. Cornbread. Hey, we talked about this on the Thanksgiving show. We did a little bit, yeah. Because who has? I still don't believe that anybody does that. Why well, we have accents? All I don't know. Uh, I actually gave it a tier three on the Thanksgiving show. Well, that was but, nuts. I just feel Is like... Is it because it's never been prepared very well? It has been dry No, it's time. not a very good Thanksgiving food. Well, it can yeah, be, it can be baked, good, it can be fried, and it can be steamed. Steamed sounds wrong. That sounds... It sounds it's like bacon. it can be mushy. It's a cake. Yeah. I would say this is an underrated roll, because I consider it in the roll family. <laughs> okay. Or is it more cake? Is it cake? It's cake. Okay. It's, it's oh, cake, well, okay. and you put a honey butter frosting on top of this it. Is, yeah. This is quick <laughs> bread made with cornmeal that usually was made in places where wheat flour was not as abundant or too expensive. So they use cornmeal to kind of make a bread. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's always so dry and crumbly. Like, it's going to be... It's Depending on who bite, makes it. Yeah, sure. Generally speaking, yeah. Even I, even the best of cornbreads is quite crumbly. Yeah, like by the time it's gonna, it's like the beans. It's gonna be everywhere. You're gonna be eating a salad. It's like, is that a crouton? No, it's cornbread. Absorb the beans with the cornbread. No, nope, don't mix. It's no. Oh no, yeah. yes, it, no, does. it does. Absolutely, yes, it does. The sweet and the beans. Yes, yes. <laughs> because guys, take uh, it easy. <laughs> it's good with chili. It's good with don't beans. Be mad at me. But <laughs> chili speaking, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna choose cornbread Joel, at a barbecue. I, 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 for that moment, I had Joel's enthusiasm for beans. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> But I am giving this a tier three just because three. it's not going to be my first pick. I might go back if they have honey butter. This would be a good yeah. dessert. Go back there, smother some honey butter on the top as thick as Zach puts mayonnaise on his burgers. Oh, and yeah. then I will eat the cornbread. You, I do honey butter like it's frosting on a cake. Yeah. Like in abundance. Makes sense. What do you think? Fitness plan pretty soon? Uh, what do you think? Well, I'm fitness in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, this is a <laughs> joke show. This is a tier two for me because this will be on my second plate. I'm not going to go to it uh, originally for my first plate, but yeah, I enjoy it. I don't want it to mix with anything else, but yeah, it's an, a nice little sweet treat, but not with beans. I actually, yes, with beans. I don't know that I've ever had this in this context. Oh, no, at a barbecue? At barbecue? Ever. You should go south. Yeah, maybe that's like what Spanish it is. Fork. Like in a backyard barbecue. <laughs> Stop if you're, it right if you're now. Like, <laughs> if you're doing barbecue, right? Like that's that's the thing, sure. right? Then of course. But uh, I mean, is I, this a little too fancy? I still. It's, it's a basic this family is barbecue. Talking, there's some fanciness on this list, and this is cornbread. Corn 
bread, especially when it has like little jalapenos in it. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Guys, well, I'm so hungry right now. I do. <laughs> uh, for me, it, I love it, but it's, it did end up as a tier two. All right. We have had a lot to eat so far. Mm-hmm. We better wash it down with a nice, refreshing, cold lemonade. The official beverage of summer. Indeed. Joel, but would like, you agree? So nice. But like country time pink lemonade in a, in uh, a little no, pink powder? is a little too acidic. Mm-hmm. Like, I just like the classic lemonade. Oh, no. A little so, bit of pulp in it. By the way, I found this out. You yeah, like why is pink lemonade like pink, pulp. guys? Why is pink lemonade pink? Because they ran out of other colors? Most store-bought pink lemonade is simply colored with concentrated grape juice or dyes. Mm-hmm. I always heard it was like grapefruit was in there. Like, it was like grapefruit that was making okay. it pink. Or but that's yeah. a lie. Strawberry. Yeah. Oh, strawberry lemonade's so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is cool. It's refreshing. When done right, because sometimes you get like the... When they bring out the big old you know, five-gallon yeah. orange container... And it's more water than lemonade, and you're drinking it, and there's no ice, so it's like warm. But if it's just one pitcher at the table, that's gone immediately. You're not getting yes. any lemonade. And then I'm a little bit upset. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, by the way. In 1696, a company known as Compain de Lemonadiers oh, well sold done. lemonade in Paris. <laughs> they sold lemonade in Paris, but they actually carried tanks of lemonade on their backs and dispensed cups of the soft drink to Parisians. That sounds like it got warm. Yeah, and mm. back sweaty. Mm. This is the right kind of sweetness for a very salty meal. And plus, it's just nice and cold. Like, That's, I think it's the perfect compliment. It's like me on bacon sand. <laughs> this is the perfect amount of sweetness. Uh. And I think there's nothing better as a beverage. Even cold water is great, but there's nothing better than lemonade as a beverage at a barbecue. It is tier one. I wish I could have put it in the tier ones, Ken. <sighs> me too. I no, you I need a beverage. You need to wash down all that bread. I'd rather water. Have water. I was going to say, I get Waters. water most. I'm not going to finger boop it, though, because I wish. Boop, I, finger boop me on I'm, water. I'm, I wish Do I could not put boop water. Pooping water. <laughs> I wish I could put lemonade in tier one, but I got bumped down to a tier two. Oh, there's same. so many good things. Oh, guess what? Water's not on the Once list, again, guys. Ken. And if it was, I would leave the show. <laughs> We're not putting water on any tier Save list. Save it for our water tier, <laughs> no. our bottled water tier. Weaver show. water tier three. <laughs> Arrowhead for the win. But also, Ken, this is also something you go back for. I don't put this on my first plate because I have to go put my plate down and then go get my drink. It's Otherwise, the dangly walk. I'm dangling the chips. Uh, the corn's falling off the side, and I'm carrying a drink. No, that doesn't work out that That's way. That's why you like water because you have never got lemonade because it's out by the time you go back. Yeah, because you drank it all. Yeah, I delicious. love I love the lemonade when it's like Chick Fil A style where it's like three ingredients right like yeah lemon water sugar boom that's mm-hmm. the way it is but then if you like cut up strawberries and put it in it oh, it's oh you, you too fancy, fancy. you crazy mm. yeah i i totally agree with joel this is a tier two it got bumped the lemonade's delicious it's so good. but i say this on every tiering show so this is my 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 thing i have to say i like it but it makes me sick lemonade does it does what too doesn't make you sick too acidic Oh, um, nothing. <laughs> Not you have like some baking soda to it and give it a base, you know. Ew. No. Balance what? it out. It gets rid of the acidity. Next up, we have cookies. <laughs> cookies. General like, cookies. Like when you guys say cookies, are we talking uh, like someone went to the store cookies, someone went 10 to, minutes before? Like, seriously. Or like Chips the, Ahoy. No, like, no, what are we talking uh, here? They're, they're bigger, but they still have the same consistency. So like no, Chips it's, Ahoy. it's from, you, you go to the bakery section yeah. of the grocery store, and it's in, it's got the black bottom with a little like window. Dome. It's right. got the dome. Ooh, those are the good ones. With the and chocolate chunks. Oh, I don't picture the dome. It's got the chocolate bag. Oh, I'm thinking the chocolate chunks or the M&M pieces. And they are always. Or like the Costco ones. Not that great. Oh, come on. In the yeah. world of cookies, they Nobody are Nobody is cookie. making homemade cookies for the barbecue. And if oh, they, they are, are from the mm. store. They do. Who? Mm. Can I come? Sure. It's probably nope. not that Wait, Sorry, Tilton Day. Nope. <gasps> you can't come. Oh, it stings. <laughs> but the problem is, is that, do you guys put dessert on your first plate? No. No. Because my wife's family, I love them. But they'll bring like some sort of jello salad or something like that or some sweet salad and they'll put it on their plate with all their savory foods. And I'm always no. like, keep no, that's it a, kosher. That's a second plate thing. Yeah. You don't go dessert on a main plate. That's perverted. <laughs> Sorry to your wife's family. <laughs> Every family barbecue I've ever been to just has dry, cheap cookies. Yes. So in this I'll context, I don't altogether. Like They're probably near the bottom of this don't list. You for need me. some dessert, though. No, no. after eating everything cookies. else, you get went, dessert. I feel sick enough that eating a cookie just feels like more extra calories. No, it's you go back and you get that one cookie and just kind of eat it in your chair and lounge back. When I went through this list, coleslaw was my easiest tier three. This was my next easiest tier, th- tier three. I say tier two. I think a dessert is an essential, and this is definitely one of the best ones out there for a backyard barbecue. No, come on. Nope. No, this is not the time for cookies. It's a hot summer day. It's not the time Barbecues for cookies. like this. You do not accept cookies? <laughs> Barbecues like this, like more more delicious sides are your dessert. Yes. Mm. 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 Sweet and beans. Mm. Mm. Cookies. 
Now we have people. This people have a weird definition of this next one: fruit salad. What yes, is it fruit to you? Salad, yummy. So yummy. I mean, there's, there's is this just a bowl of assorted fruit? Well, this, it, this so, is, there's a variety. Yeah, d- based on which neighbor brings it. Yeah. There are going to get some where you're going to be straight up fruit, just cut up and put into a bowl. You Good. get the kind where you get like the walled off salad where you put the mayonnaise sauce in it. Uh, mm. You get jello salads, which could also be fruit salads because they put fruit in them. That's cheating, right? That's like I didn't have enough apples to bring. I'll tell you what so I put it in jello. I'll tell you what it's not, salad. though. I'll tell you what it's not, though. Fruit salad is not a fruit cocktail. A fruit cocktail, Go on. according to the USDA. Oh, I mean, we were all wondering. Yes. This <laughs> must be, this, this is the range, uh, this is the fruits and the, per, the range of percentages that must be in something to be considered a fruit cocktail. Okay. It must have 30 to 50% diced peaches, 25 to 45% diced pears, 6 to 16% diced pineapple, 6 to 20% whole grapes, 2 to 6% cherry. How upset are you right now? Gross. Yeah. I don't like I was gonna say I don't like fruit but cocktails. But once again, this isn't a fruit cocktail, this is a fruit yeah, salad. Because you're above yes. the age of but, twelve. But pineapple can be lurking around any corner in a fruit salad. <laughs> It's like, oh, this strawberry is delicious. What's that horrible, awful, uh, terrible, acidic flavor coming up? Oh, there's a pineapple under there. Day ruined. Oh, this is unrelated. But Joel, I was thinking of you. I went and got a pistachio shake at mm, the iceberg. That sounds good. Yeah, but. it sounds great. There's pineapple in it. There is a Joel out there. There's a hidden pineapple everywhere. in some multiverse <laughs> that will eat pineapple. That loves what a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, Zach, you mentioned Snicker salad though. Yes, my, mm. my sister-in-law uh, Paige makes a delicious uh, Snicker it's, salad. It's like what vanilla pudding, Snickers, and green Granny apples. Smith apples. Granny yeah. Smith apples, Snickers, vanilla pudding, and it's delicious. That actually it's, sounds really good. It's it is really good. good. So I won't put uh, fruit salad on my first plate because there's too much savory food there. I don't want anything touching, like the kiwis, for example. Mm-hmm. And so this will be on my second plate, and it's just this is the kind of dessert that I will go for. I don't need it. If it's out, I'm not going to be really sad. But it's a nice little refreshing dessert. So it's a tier two. I mean, I'm going to see. I've already kind of mentioned it. It's too dangerous. My mother-in-law okay. is so wonderful. And she stopped putting pineapple in a lot of fruit salads. Because of you? Yes. Well, and my other brother-in-law who doesn't like pineapple. But I still, I'm like, don't do that because I'm probably not going to eat the fruit salad anyway. It's not my thing. You're a pineapple propagandist. How does that work? You're anti-pineapple. propaganda pro-propaganda? I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Mm. But yeah, I'm not a fruit salad fan. It's a tier three. I generally don't eat it, except for the Snicker salad. I'll eat that. Uh, this is a tier three. It's just too too risky. Okay. I, I mean, if that. it's just assorted fruit, that's good. But it's not just assorted fruit. It, no. it gets weird. That's why you, you pick out the strawberries and the kiwi and you leave everyone the banana <sighs> chunks. I'll just leave it all and get more meat. I eat the banana chunks. You like the banana chunks? I like banana chunks. But, but they get so mushy. They get so mushy. Banana chunks were my band names in college. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music did you guys play? Actually, we did heavy death metal. <laughs> oh, so it was hard oh, music for soft bananas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Next up, we have hot dogs. Hot dog, hot dog, hot, hot diggity, diggity dog. dog. Strike. Hot dogs have an interesting history because they... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can I give you their history? Go we got it. some extra animal parts. <laughs> what do we, we do? Pure. Shove them in a casing. Call it done. <laughs> Pure no, so you have, uh, I was going to say, because you have these hot dogs, which is like, the, I mean, we're going to talk about brats later on. Sure. But there is a difference because of how finely the, the meat is ground up inside. So Jelly. you have the Vienna sausage, <laughs> or you have the Frankfurter Wurst, Wursten, and these are the two different types of uh, general hot dogs, is mm-hmm. these two that we got here in America. But they come from Germany. And they were sausages before, but, the, but it's just funny how America has popularized this German dish as our own. Now, I have to ask you, gentlemen, what do you typically put on your hot dog? Man- mayonnaise. <laughs> do you? And mustard, yeah. You put mayonnaise, mayonnaise on it? Mayonnaise and mustard. You're off the show. <laughs> you put mayonnaise on your hot dog? <laughs> it's, I'm basically putting Sizzler Malibu chicken sauce on every Ooh, hot dog I eat. Wait, good. no relish or anything? No, I... It, <laughs> I will occasionally, yeah, like branch out. I do like sauerkraut mm-hmm. on a hot dog, uh, but if it's generally at a backyard barbecue, there is ketchup and mustard, right? Ketchup, and mustard, and relish barbecue. Usually. Maybe somebody, yeah. somebody brought maybe barbecue, and then somebody is also having burgers, and therefore the mayo is there for the burgers. No, I steal not. the mayo no, from the burger no. section. I put it on the bun. They do and that then, in South America too. And then I put, it, so, I put it in the bun and I spin the hot dog around so it gets coated. On my hot dogs, I put ketchup and mustard and then I give it to my kids because it's trash meat. Stop. Oh. <laughs> okay, bar no. S. <laughs> I don't like hot dogs very much. I, that's disgusting. That said, 
I will eat them if there's no hamburgers left. And I'll be like, okay, it's a hot but dog. But what if it's like a, a Nathan's classic? 100% all beef. How do I know? Do I see the package? Yes. Yeah. Someone advertising, guys, I brought Nathan's all beef hot dog. Hebrew, Hebrew National. Mm. Actually, I actually don't like Hebrew National as much as Nathan's. I, I would agree with you. Yeah. But, but Hebrew National are a close second for me. They're more fancy ones. Oh, yeah. I was going to read this, by the way. So speaking of toppings. Sure. In 2005, the U.S.-based National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, which is part of the American Meat Institute, found mustard to be the most popular, preferred by 32% of respondents. 23% favored ketchup, 17% chili, 9% chick pickle relish, oh, chili. and chili. 7% yeah. onions. Chili and cheese? Chili dogs. Yeah. Pretty good. What about sauerkraut? Do you guys put sauerkraut? Sauerkraut, I, I like. The older I've got, I think when I turned 36, I was fine with sauerkraut. <laughs> is I, like an age thing? I yeah. prefer it on a different type of food yeah, that's very definitely. Oh, yes. But look, we'll I would go soon. straight mustard on hot dog, maybe some relish. If I had to pick one, it's mustard, for sure. I do ketchup yeah. mustard every time. I don't you know do. if you guys know this based like on my social media handle, but I like mustard. Yes. Quite a bit. You like it tumbling across I, your hot dog. I throw it across the room. I mean, Zach's the kind of guy when we go to Maverick and he's a little bit hungry, he'll get a Bahama Mama, which Maverick is a gas station, so he gets gas station hot dogs. I just for clarification. Too. Funny you should With say mustard. that, Kent, because mm. actually 7-Eleven sells the most grilled hot dogs in North America. What? Are you serious? 100 million <laughs> annually. The people are buying hot dogs. 7-Eleven hot dogs. From 7-Eleven. Just sit yes. on the rollers. Yeah. The place where you step on the floor, your shoe is lost <laughs> to it forever because it's stuck. Well... <laughs> Yes. And You're buying hot dogs to eat. I, well, also the origins of hot dog. I talked about the sausage, but even just putting it in a bun. Yeah. They say, some people say it's because like when they were selling originally, they just sell them as sausages and mm-hmm. they were hot. And so they'd give them like protective gloves so they could hold the sausage and then people would just steal the gloves. So they started putting them in rolls instead to be like, here, now you can hold it and just take the roll. I want a hot dog glove. <laughs> it sounds good, doesn't it? And they call them hot dogs because of people saying there may have been dog meat in it back in the 1800s. It was a joke. But actually, in Germany, the consumption of dog meat was common in certain areas during the 19th and 20th centuries. So the suspicion that sausages contained dog meat was, quote, occasionally justified. History is gross. (laughs) Hey, guys, I've eaten multiple hot dogs within the last week. I love these things. I used to think that I didn't like hot dogs, and I'd always say, oh, I don't like those. Turns out I just don't like low-quality ones. Like, if they're decent beef or whatever... Like the, the lower so quality ones are generally you have or, a burger, or anyone you get from a restaurant. There's a generally burger and a hot dog. Are you getting them both on the same plate? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. I will get a hot dog on my second plate. Oh. See, I, I usually do a hot dog as I'm cooking for everyone else. Okay. Like I'm finishing up the burgers and I'm eating the hot dog and then I'll get a burger for my main. Event. Usually okay. what happens actually, if I, I get the, the burger to start and then I leave space for sides, get all the sides and then there tends to be multiple hot dogs left mm-hmm. and then I just sneakily eat the rest of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, lower Without quality. Buns? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, no, I, with a bun. Lower quality meat, lower quality uh, hot dogs are going to have like chicken or turkey or pork in them. The 100% LB for a little more uh, palatable for people. It's the grab bag of meats. You ever have a guy bring like a, a crock pot full of ho- cheap hot dogs soaked in water? Mm-hmm. I'm okay with dirty hot dog water. <laughs> it, tastes like, it tastes like New York. <laughs> Uh, Hold on, you're just drinking the water? What do you mean? I'm not What's drinking going on? the water. It sounds like it's you are. In the water. Carbonate that. Put it in a can. <laughs> World's largest hot dog, 197 feet. Ugh. With the bun, also 198 feet. Um, <laughs> so, world record for most hot dogs eaten the in 10 minutes. Did the world's largest hot dog run for office somewhere? <laughs> uh, the, the record for hot dogs eaten in 10 minutes, 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes by Joey, Joey Chestnut. Chestnut. And it was Nathan's Hot Dogs. Yeah. I give it a tier one. Tier one? Tier one. When I was a kid. Sure. And I was in math class. There was this kid that sat in front of me. And every single day, he'd pull out this cold hot dog. What? And just on its start, own? Wait, like, on its own. In a bag? In a bag. He'd pull it out. Okay. And a cold hot dog. And he'd start eating it in front of me. They and the smell pre-cooked. would waft back to me. <laughs> and that is why I hate <laughs> math. But I <laughs> love hot you took dogs. That. And absolutely, I love hot dogs. Tier one. I don't care yeah. if they're low quality. I don't care. I like. I don't I'm not care saying that's a hot dog bait and switch, but that was a hot dog bait and switch. I love hot dogs, <laughs> and so like I, I'm always up for them. Like I, like Zach said, he didn't care for the lower quality ones. I don't care as much, and yeah, I will put the ketchup and mustard on them almost every time. Sometimes I'll do a little. Some, I used to do this one where I do barbecue sauce and like cheese, the uh, easy cheese sometimes on the top. It's a it's a really tough time for the country, for the world. Even everything's gone up in price, but you know what hasn't gone up in price? Hot dogs, Polish dogs. At yeah. Sam's Club and Costco. Yeah. No, Kent. They don't do Polish anymore. They don't anymore. do Polish at the cafeteria anymore. How dare you? They don't at Sam's Club anymore? No. I don't know at Sam's Club, but they don't <laughs> at Costco anymore. I'm we don't go to Sam's Club. Costco. We call, we call we it Sam's. 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 <laughs> I give this a tier two. 
Because I, I will eat it, but it's when I'm desperate. It's like an essential. You get the burger and no, the dog. I've got the burger and everything else on my plate. I'm usually pretty You full. gave it a tier one, right? Oh, I gave it a okay. tier one. This you, is America. Do you know those phrases that are like, oh, like now we're cooking with whatever. Now we're cooking with grease. Yeah. It's sure. like now you're on to something sort of thing. Yeah. My wife has now become, uh, the phrase is now we're at a baseball game. Because that's what she says every time she has her hot dog all prepared and ready to go. Mm-hmm. It is like a signature like pairing with summer. Baseball, hot dogs. So good. Delicious. Going to the bathroom by the seventh inning. I get it. Yep. <sighs> that's what the stretch is for. <laughs> Come on, Kent. Tier one. Okay. How about next is fancy hot dogs. The bratwurst. Bratwurst. It really is fancy, though. It really is the fancy hot dog. It's like the hot dog that goes to the gym. <laughs> right? It's the bro hot dog. It ask, is. ask me what my favorite topping condiment is. What is your favorite? It's mayo. Condiment? It's mayo. <laughs> <laughs> then mustard. Then sauerkraut. Okay. But it's mayo. Why? I love it. Why? Um, You're already getting like the, the hot, it's like pork juice <laughs> coming out of there, right? right? That, That's mm. a condiment in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Man, bratwurst. But bratwurst is like, and this, so is, good. this is probably more information than I want to say on this show because it makes it sound worse, but... Brats are less finely grounded, so they have a coarser texture and yeah. heavier quality than hot dogs. True. And that's and they're usually uh, thicker than hot dogs as well. And hot dogs are pre-cooked. Brats are not. So there is a difference between hot dogs and brats. Brats aren't pre-cooked? No. You oh. Are you eating them right out of the bag? Oops. He had a kid in math class who just sit there and just <laughs> eat just, a raw brat. He'd let a little host and he'd eat his brat and tape worms. <laughs> but there are a bunch of different types of bratwurst, depending on what you're doing. In fact, Zach, I sent you over just now oh, no. a list of oh, uh, no, types Joel! of bratwurst. Thank you. You monster. And I was hoping you could read these for us in your in your, your best no. <laughs> bratwurst in accent. Okay. We've got Frankish bratwurst. Yeah. Kohlberger bratwurst. Is the hand gesture necessary? Kumbachler bratwurst. Is, <laughs> yep. is that Klingon? Yep. <laughs> Did you just threaten me in Klingon? <laughs> we have the Nürnberger Roost bratwurst. Yep. Wurzburger bratwurst. Yes. Thuringer Roost bratwurst. I'm, I'm sound this like I'm so on offensive. Twin Peaks. Yeah. <laughs> Nor, oh my word. Yeah. Nord, hey, sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> Do the snakes disappear? <laughs> and Rothwurst. There you go. Wow. Thank you. Uh, Bratwurst was actually you? popularized in Sheboygan County, Wisconsin, Sh- in the late, late in the 1920s. Uh, and That's they're generally place. made from pork. That's kind of just what it is. Sometimes beef or veal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. These are hot dogs for adults, I would yes. say. Okay. And the, the beauty of a brat is. Hey, we're out of buns. That's okay That's because fine. a brat. Isn't that a song from Sing Street? The beauty of the brat. <laughs> the beauty of the brat. <laughs> you don't need a bun for a brat. You don't. <laughs> you actually don't. You it's really don't. And, and oftentimes, if you go to like a German restaurant, they won't like they won't serve it on a bun. Yeah, and if you, you ask for one, oh, be like, "What are you yeah. doing here?" Yeah. It really is just a way of of making it convenient at like a summer barbecue. Yeah, yeah. You, but you don't need it. Delicious. Tier and one. the Delicious. name Bratwurst means uh, brat, finely chopped meat, and Wurst sausage. Okay. So there you go. That's what, what, do, you, what do you give it? I give it tier one. Uh, if I'm giving awesome. hot dogs tier one, I got to give brat tier one. Yeah, you do. They're tasty. Okay. Although I have had some bad brats. When you uh, have, they can be a little fatty. Those well, little, not even that. Just like the flavor. I'm like, I don't like the flavor of this. I'm like, oh, it's it's a horseradish and uh, wasabi uh, wor- uh, no, brats. Yeah. And I'm like, gross. It's apple and cilantro. Yeah. Like, what? And every time they do that, I'm like, why? Just make it a straight up brat. Yeah. I have had some weird like like deli special yeah. uh, bratwurst. But overall, man, these are great. Yeah. Mm, I one. won't turn down a brat. <sighs> and I may just put mustard on it. Usually. What? Well, I was going to say, I usually do ketchup mustard, mustard, but sometimes just grilled onions. Mustard. Sure. Yeah. Must- sauerkraut? No, oh, yeah. Mustard, no. grilled onions, sauerkraut. I'm not a sauerkraut. Delicious. Guy. You're 36. You should uh, be, you should be there by Thank now. you. <laughs> but yeah, not a fan of sauerkraut. Mm-hmm. Not my taste yet. Mm. I, I, I wouldn't like shove it away, but I don't choose to put it on there. If it's on there, I'll eat it. If All not, right, I sure. won't put it on. Next is uh, very, we're getting too fancy. Deviled eggs. <laughs> Wait, mm. what's fancy about deviled eggs? They take effort. You know, in some cultures, when some denominations of Christianity, they don't like calling them deviled eggs because that's too evil. What do they call them? Twice baked eggs? They call it stuffed eggs, dressed eggs, or Russian eggs. Oh, that's mm. offensive to me. Yeah. So so these are hard-boiled eggs that are uh, cut in half, and then there's a paste made from the egg yolks mixed with mayonnaise or mustard or yeah. Miracle Whip. Woo! 
Put nope. back inside the egg and then sprinkle with Zach, a little paprika mayonnaise to do is gravy. Nothing. Okay. What does the paprika do? Nothing. Really? It adds nothing. color. It does. It just makes it nothing. look so nice. Do you guys consider these pre gaming snacks? Because I'm never putting this on my actual plate, but I'll eat them before the meal. I will take as many of these and put them on my plate as I think is socially responsible. Two. Two. If you do more than two, I'm straight I, up judging you. Uh, I, I, I don't do uh-oh. more than two. <laughs> oh, no. You guys. Kid, I'm Joey Chestnut eating these things. Yeah. Oh, I'm filling up my plate. Your breath. I mean, I am st- <laughs> I'm sitting 10 feet away from you as you're eating, <laughs> shoving down these deviled eggs. These are, I'm honestly, Ken, I'm like eating some as I'm filling up my plate. I put some on my plate. Yeah. I go down to eat. Okay. I might grow up and grab another. And then after I'm done with my plate, I might go and get some more. I pregame. Mid game, post game. I probably eat at least a dozen eggs by the time. But I'm if they're the meal. sitting out for more than twenty minutes, they're not cool and refreshing anymore. Oh, they're no, so they're warm eggs with mayo. Oh, what's wrong with warm eggs? You have them for breakfast all the time. Mm, different. No. It's different. It's not that different. Uh, by the way, the first known <laughs> it's recipe very different <laughs> actually. The first known recipe to suggest the use of mayonnaise as an ingredient in deviled eggs was in the 1896 version of American cookbook named the Boston Cooking School Cookbook by Fanny Farmer. And the name deviled means because it was spicy or zesty, because it usually had mustard and pepper Zest. in it. Uh, in France, the dish is called oeuf mimosa. Oeuf. Oh, wait. No. Why am I doing this? It's Zach's turn. No. Uh, so, I, Zach, once again, I've sent over to you a list of uh, translations of different types of eggs. Could you go ahead and read those for us, please? Why did I put these back to back? Okay. You already mentioned that in France, the dish is called oeuf mimosa. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. In Hungary, French. it's called, oh, jeez, tolta, totas, <laughs> <laughs> Yep, stuffed egg. <laughs> or kazintojas. That's a casino egg. Sure. Sure. In Romania, it's called oa umpolt. Stuffed <laughs> eggs, yes. <laughs> That's probably actually accurate. In Poland, <laughs> it's called yaka Fazarowin. Great comedian. Yep, sure. Yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the Netherlands, it's called Guvold A. Stuffed egg. Yes. In yes. Sweden, yes. it's called Fjeld Egg. <laughs> Stuffed egg. I Fjeld Egg with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> then no. on the island of Malta, yes, of course. it's called Bad Milne. Stuffed eggs. Yes. And in parts of South America, <laughs> it's called Huevos <laughs> a la Parueña. Here's Peruvian they, eggs. Here's how they came up with the names, right? They're like, they talk to Joel in all these other countries, and they're like, he just ate three. He's got a mouthful of three deviled eggs. And they're like, what would you call this? And he goes, <laughs> because that gross cream <laughs> is infecting everything. I love deviled eggs. Tier one, obvious for me. <laughs> I, obvious. I was once in a play. I think you saw this play. Did you not, Kent? The nerd. Yeah, I was in a play, and the director insisted on us eating real food in the, the dinner scene, and I played a very obnoxious character, uh-huh. and there were real deviled eggs on the plate. Uh, that How I long had, have they been sitting out? Oh, about half the show. Yeah. Um, and so I would eat eat the deviled eggs in character. I would take them off of other characters' plates. And at one point, I was double fisting deviled eggs, and they were like talking to each other, and then I'd eat them both at the same time. I probably ate at least six deviled eggs a night. Per so show. three wow. full eggs on stage and then ran around. It was an uncomfortable experience, and it was the only thing that ever like pulled them away from being the most amazing thing. I love also, they're just the store, like, you know, whatever. They weren't like homemade. Yeah, homemade's know. better. Uh, these are amazing, tier one. My Specifically, I'm so happy, my mother-in-law makes the most amazing deviled eggs. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've had good deviled eggs. I know I've be- beaten them up. Recently, someone made some good deviled eggs, and they were very cold, nice and crisp. But no, these are, do not belong on my plate when everything else is on my plate. This is a tier three for me. Because uh-huh. I already got four sorry. in my mouth. I don't need my plate yet. You stole them all. <laughs> I did. Next up is potato salad. A loose term. Salad here. Oh, yeah. According to Wikipedia, the source of all knowledge and truth, a salad is a dish consisting of mixed, mostly natural ingredients with at least one raw ingredient. Hmm. Where's the raw ingredient? Potato salad. Where's the raw ingredient? Celery. You are more of a bound salad, as Wikipedia calls you, which are assembled with thick sauces such as mayonnaise. Again, Mm. get that out of here. American potato salad most likely originated uh, by way of German and other European Im- immigrants coming here in the 19th century. And it's usually served, American style potato salad is usually served at cold or room temperature. Mm, room temperature <laughs> mayo. <laughs> delicious. And honestly, I prefer potato salad when it's warm. Yeah, I don't like it to be super, super cold. Yeah. Hey, Kent, you, yeah, sure. 
the uh, the people with fine taste are talking. Uh, fine taste. Hey, Go Joel. on. Yes. Hey, Joel. Uh, what's in a deviled egg? Uh, it is mayonnaise, mustard, okay. and uh, paprika. And an egg. An egg, yes. Yeah. Yes, egg yolk. Yeah, I'd also, I like a little bit of relish uh, in, in my deviled I'm not a eggs. relish guy. I um, like the sweet pickles. My, my mother-in-law has a celery relish stuff that's really good. Intriguing. Um, what's in potato salad? Uh, it's generally potatoes, mayonnaise, uh, mustard, mm-hmm. sometimes eggs. Uh-huh. Yep, and so some So basically, pickles. these are deviled eggs mixed up with potato in it. They should be. Delicious. They should be. And when I make potato salad, that's exactly what it is. Zach. I am basically one-to-one potato. It is egg. deviled eggs with potato filler is what eggs, I make. 100%. That's what potato is. But not all potato salads like that. What's wrong with people who don't do that? Sometimes they put those pickle chunks in. Sometimes they what put onions chunks in. Put whatever you want. It's already poison. They, th- I have had far too many bad potato salads, which is why I started making my own. 100%. So I'm giving this a tier three. What? Oh, wow. What? Because... I, because, like I said, I've had far too many bad potato salads where okay. I'm like, this is not a good I've always I had, see what you mean. I've always told people, like, I, I don't really like potato salads, so I'm not going to take that, even to be courteous. People are like, it's my mom's potato salad. It's actually really good. And then I try it and I judge people's moms because <laughs> it's just, I've never had a good potato Should salad mom. ever. So, yeah, tier three all the way. Wow. Uh, tier two for me. Okay, because you ran out of tier one probably. Well, partially. But also because when this is good, it's really good. Specifically, like, uh, I will use... A recipe for deviled egg potato salad. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what, what it's like. good. That's what and it's that's good. Hideous. Essentially, what my mother in law makes. I, I said tonight when I was talking to my wife, if I could eat an entire meal worth of my mother in law's potato salad, I would. <laughs> it is amazing. You ever had just like when it's cold It'd and flavorless? It would be like the juicing though? diet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be bad. <laughs> but like you said, Joel, oftentimes, especially like just coming from a store, like yeah. you know, a container in the store, mm-hmm. not great. So that all balances up to me to be a tier two. Fair. Next up, wow, the bell of the ball here. Rolls. <laughs> Why are you knocking on rolls like that? We gave it a tier one uh, of Thanksgiving exactly. show. Thanksgiving rolls are delicious. Rolls are bread. Bread is amazing. Okay, Mr. Be Judicious with the rolls at the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we had a set amount of buns or rolls, and I was being the dad, and I told everyone to be judicious. There's still one roll left at my house. I, I walked away with four rolls, by the way, on my extra plate oh, at our recent guess. barbecue. Uh. This this is one of those awkward <laughs> things, too, where like, you know, you're know dangling the chips under, you're holding the cup, and then well, the roll, you're like, where do you put the roll? Well, it's hard, though. Is this a plate one thing? Because you already have a bun, maybe one or two if you have a hot dog and a hamburger. And right? you, in this context, though, it's just filler. It is. And a lot of times you're like balancing it on top of the meat. A filler or a plate cleaner? Could be a plate cleaner. I, and I respect also, that could be a sandwich initiator you get a oh. roll you're like oh i got grilled chicken i got a roll boom yeah chicken sandwich yeah. oh should we put some baked beans in there smear it boom. around bean sandwich <laughs> so you just use it to clean yes this is the mop of the food world a hundred percent yeah and i, mean, I love that- <laughs> mops i guess <laughs> <laughs> i get that at thanksgiving yeah i don't subscribe to the same theory for for a barbecue it doesn't belong at a barbecue i feel like there are other things to fill up on i'd rather have chips than a roll now generally speaking it like you said but if this were like a smoked meat barbecue and you were getting like brisket or mm-hmm. pulled pork or something like a barbecue style barbecue i think this would take a higher place i'd rather yes. have cornbread mm. because you're not having a hamburger bun generally at a smoked meat barbecue right but if you're having grilled chicken i'll put a roll in there yeah even if there are um, rolls and it's intended to have like pulled pork sliders or something like that um i honestly usually go without the bun well because i can right. eat more meat usually at the thanksgiving I get that at the yeah. thanksgiving dinner usually the rolls are freshly baked mm-hmm. at a backyard barbecue generally speaking they're store-bought yeah, in, they're a bag. in the bag yeah so i'm giving you, you a don't tier want two. to bake it no, no in the hot, it, summer. In the hot summer. No. no so tier two for me tier two for me tier three because in this context pass you've already got your carbs from the potatoes you've eaten uh, a lot of potatoes so many eggs now I mean, talk about filler. Let's do soda. Which we've already talked about in Bacon Cell episode 229, Pop Goes My Heart, and Bacon Cell episode 242. Is Pepsi okay? Can we just, can we just put aside the ultimate like soda for this context is root beer? Absolutely. Well, for us, obviously. I would say yes. Yeah. It's got to be. I yeah. mean, for maybe, the world. Maybe good argument for Coca-Cola. So let's yeah. say that's for kids and for uh, <laughs> Latter-day Saints. <laughs> sure. Root beer. Is Root the, beer. Uh, Shasta, three liters would also be good here. A ki- nice kiwi strawberry. But then you got a <laughs> nice kiwi strawberry. <laughs> the nice th- I prefer the black cherry myself. See, oh, that's dark. But are you talking about pouring it into a cup or are you talking about a can? Because a canned soda, I think, is better at a backyard barbecue. It's easier for sure. Yeah, that's true. Pull it out of yeah, the cooler. Around. Your hand is just <laughs> freezing so, cold. Wait, so all these kids put their gross little dirty thingies in the into chips? the cooler. 
in the chip, and then, then you're that okay with water that. that surrounds your soda is just brown at oh, that it's point. Fine. That's basically hot dog water at that point. Ken, this is why you have gut <laughs> issues. You, you have <laughs> nothing in use there. that. No, it's because you have no tolerance no for bacteria. Like I, I love soda, obviously. I consume it. I, I'm addicted, but. If I'm going for a beverage, and this was kind of my argument here, if I'm going for a beverage, it's going to be lemonade first, maybe even water to kind of be a little more refreshing, but I'm definitely going to grab a soda at one point. So it's a tier but isn't, I was going two to say, for me. The, one of the most satisfying sounds in the world, Kent, is opening that can on a summer day at a summer barbecue, that little... <laughs> yeah. That's, that's summer. Is it when you get your first plate, though, you're going to get a soda at the same time? Probably. See, I'll, I would do lemonade first. Because mm. the carbonation sometimes is a little bit too heavy. Exactly. The carbonation, but then it's, it's, eventually it's, the the carbonation naturally makes room. <laughs> sure, yeah, okay, I get you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like this is another item that takes up too much space. You put it in your pocket. If it's a can, you just stuff it in your no, pocket. I mean, yeah, I do, and I'll save it for later, the drive home. But during the midst of the meal, like I would rather have a lemonade or even just a water. So tier two. I'm giving a tier two as well. Mm-hmm. I, I do really like a soda for a barbecue, though, especially when it's got the different variety there. You get like a red cream. Yeah. And you get like a root beer. All right. And you get like a kiwi strawberry. <laughs> I'm drinking so much a soda. A nice kiwi strawberry. So many calories. Next up, green salad. Green salad. You don't make friends with salad. Oh, my gosh. I forgot so many of my dad jokes. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll put them back in and post. Before every barbecue, I tell myself I'll eat healthy and stick to salads. <laughs> but then my plan takes a turn for the worst. Brought worst. Nope. Oh, <laughs> I was waiting for the joke. <laughs> we all <You> were. <laughs> <laughs> so green salads, you're going to get the leafy greens in there, but the dressing can vary. Sometimes mm-hmm. they've already got the pre-dressed salad. Do you yeah. guys like that or do you like putting on your own dressing? Uh, pre-dressed is what I normally have at barbecues. Oh, but there's a like, a like a nice raspberry vinaigrette. You can hear the tick of the timer. I feel like, oh, this is oh, going to yeah. be so soggy. Right. Yeah, especially when it's been out for a while. It's got the soggy lettuce. Mm hmm. But it's like you got. There's your, like your, some nice pecans in there as well, though. That's okay. No, I like the separate. Ooh. Like you got your Hidden Valley Ranch, you got your Olive Garden Italian, <laughs> the classics. <laughs> you, you cannot trust people to put their own dressing on their own salad because the ranch dressing is going to be gone. My mother in law is actually the one who taught me that I could enjoy like cranberries in my salad. Like, yeah. I'm kinda like oh, that's kind of nice, right? Crazy, something like that. Yeah, craisins. Those are tasty. Mm. Or like, you know, or like the pecans in there, or like the cashews. Like, I'm suddenly mm-hmm. like, I, it's opened my eyes to salads when they were pre-made. Otherwise, but, I'd go for a straight up ranch. But at what plate does this go on in the barbecue? Are you putting this on any plate? Have you guys? Yes. Speaking of the dressing thing, have have you ever made a salad in your life that had its like a separate dressing that had the proper proportion that you had just enough dressing for the lettuce that you have? You didn't go too much or too little. Cafe Rio, Costa Vida, maybe. I mean, like that you have made. <laughs> no. Because me, every single time I even try, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll have some lettuce. It's like, oh, this is just ranch. It's, oh, no, it's like, this is a salad. Oh, now it's soup. Now it's just Thousand Island. Yes. Mm. Um, I love a good salad with ranch dressing on it. And then, oh, when it's got like the olives in there and like mushrooms and... Um, do you feel better about yourself? I do. You're eating this? And that's okay. why I put it on my plate. It's usually mm. on the side there, like this little, you know, dollop of, it's, of it's, salad. It sounds like pretense. Covered in ranch. Yeah. Uh, so, but there's sometimes they always put purple onions in salad. Oh, I'm yeah. not a fan of that. Right. I'm giving. The, I wanted to give this a tier one because I gave it a tier one, or no, I gave it a tier two on Thanksgiving show. And I love a green salad at, on a summer barbecue because it does feel kind of refreshing and like I'm being responsible. But it ended up as a tier two. It's a tier three. I like salad. I will order a salad when I go to some places, but there's no room on my plate for this. Uh, and then the, the way, baked beans kind of make it swim, and it doesn't really mix. Fun fact. The first use of the word salad bar, meaning like a buffet style of salad and greens, was in 1937. Oh, okay. It's how long salad bars have been around. Probably Sizzler. Sizzler. Sliders. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Oh, this is a tier three. I, wow. Both of you guys go in tier three? Yeah. yeah. I like a green salad at a summer barbecue. Green salad. Boring. It's better than pasta salad. <laughs> <laughs> My friends invited me to a barbecue night the other day. I said no, but I'm regretting it. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> With that said, next up is steak. 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 Now, this is maybe a little more fancy than just a backyard barbecue. This is fancy, but I'll tell you what. I, th- I thought this was a bad choice until I realized I've had more than one event in my life where it was like a bring-your-own-meat situation. And people bring steak. And then I, we brought steak. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, uh, a steak is generally refers to a meat sliced o- across the muscle fibers. Does that make it sound appetizing? No, no it doesn't. Uh, different types of cuts. Do you guys know different types of cuts of steak? Yeah. Give me, give me them. What do you know? Tri-tip. 
Okay. T-bone. Yep. Oh, Ribeye. Oh, New, yep. New York. Sirloin. Yep. Also, uh, filet fl- mignon. Uh, tenderloin, and you got the rump, and the porterhouse are also other cuts that are pretty popular. Okay. Uh, chop houses started in London in the 1690s and served individual portions of meat known as chops. That was the origin of the steakhouse, and only men were allowed until like the 1800s. Rude. That's no. lame. Women like steak too. Yeah. I don't know if I can trust a steak at a barbecue. Like, I really have to trust the host, right? It is that you put a lot of faith in their hands. If they're like, it's usually well done. Have you ever brought a steak to a barbecue and then Zuck just out, entrusted probably. it to someone else? I've never have, no. Like, okay, I brought the steak. Okay, you're on the grill. Why don't you cook it? No. It's always been a... It's uh, oh, as soon as you're done, I'll, I'll jump on it. Here's the problem with steak. Because uh, we all agree here. We love steak. Sure. Yes. Steak is a prime meat. Yes. But when you're lap eating and you've got a piece of steak, and by the way, the uh, prongs on your plastic fork have already broken into the steak, yep. and you're trying to cut out a plastic knife, what are you going to do? Or or they give you the steak knife, and you're cutting through the paper <gasps> plate into your leg. Yeah. Those are tendons. <laughs> Just like you said, it doesn't sound very good. So for me, I hate to say it, but steak is a tier two at a backyard barbecue. <gasps> I hate to say it. But you can't just make every Give meat be tier your one. man card. <laughs> Still, it's hard to eat. You just gonna pick up the whole steak with your plastic fork. And sometimes I do. And eat your plastic utensil at the same time. Sometimes I pick it up like Uncle Rico and just fling it at people. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh, what do you guys put on your steak, by the way? If you're getting a steak at a backyard barbecue, are you putting anything uh, on the it? The steak is good enough. You don't need anything. Pepper? Exactly, kid. Yeah. I don't put anything on my steak. Not even A1? Uh, no, I, I hate I hate steak oh, you, sauce. Really? Hate okay. it. I let it touch the potato salad. <laughs> it makes the potato that salad sounds a little nice. <laughs> <laughs> I Where some, did the steak touch you? <laughs> if I get some steak juice on my potato salad, if this, if, like Ken said, though, if the steak is cooked right, you don't need. But sauce. it rarely is a barbecue. So that's if why it's, it's a tier two. If it's not, though, I will put barbecue sauce on it. At in this context, yeah, sure. That is the only sauce I will mm. allow on my steak if it's not cooked to the way I like it. Mm. But I'm giving this a tier one. Yeah, how are you eating this though? Your lap eating. Your plate is already folding in half in your lap, and you're like the uh, steak. Ken, is- where there's a steak, there's a way. Okay. And Explain. Gener- and that's not an explanation, and by the way. generally a picnic table somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I will okay. sit You've on the ground plate. <laughs> and eat this. I will eat steak because a steak, when you go to backyard barbecue and you see steak, that, that barbecue just got elevated to the next level. Yeah, like, it's well oh, done, it's a though. steak backyard barbecue? <laughs> what? <laughs> is it the rich neighbors? <laughs> yeah, this is a tier one. This is a tier Sorry, one. Sorry, everybody. It's so so I'm being realistic here. Mm-hmm. It's rarely ever great. Because steak re- is amazing. Realistic or less manly? What are you saying? Realistic. Okay. And it's hard to eat. You ever grilled a steak in your life? Yeah, I love steak. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Don't so even. Don't you have even. Because you're having other people do it for you. <laughs> My junior elite and I will we'll be hanging out later. Okay. 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 Proud. On this episode of Bake Bake It Sell, we question Ken's manliness. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just like every other episode? Yeah. Oh. Well, we're down to our final item, and I have tallied the scores, and all I can say is... You monsters. Hope your wife doesn't listen to this episode. <sighs> Watermelon. Which we talked about in episode 354, Fruit by the Tear. Here's the problem with watermelon. Nothing. It's the perfect there time is to eat watermelon. never enough room on the plate for a slice of watermelon. No. Oh, this is be- this is a pregame more than a veggie tray. It's oh, better- this is postgame for me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It, that's the thing. It's better, better dessert than the gross cookies that Joanne totally. brought. Totally. It's better cold, but at a backyard barbecue, it's usually pretty warm by the time you get to it. Mm. But it is a nice, refreshing break from the other food. It is. I am not bashing on watermelon. Please, Zach, tell your wife I am not bashing on She's watermelon. right now. But while his fruit salad was an obvious tier three for me, this was an unfortunate I agree. tier three. I think it's a tier two fruit. But it's a tier three barbecue food just because of the process of elimination. It's it's a nice refreshing course, but yeah. it's post food. Um, I'm off the show <laughs> for the mayonnaise thing. This is this is it's tier one. You're probably right. This a lot of people would agree with you. Summer. I mean, your wife is going to let you stay, so that's good. They, I mean, they, they print this on on like nice summer dresses for a reason, man. Like you gotta have watermelon at the backyard barbecue. You no. gotta have it, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna be putting it on my plate and eating it. I'm I'm shocked because I already had my cookie. It's good. I'm shocked. No, I will I will throw the cookie. I will eat Snickers salad and cookies the before I eat watermelon. Dog. No, no, no. Watermelon. We're, we're sorry. You okay? should be. There was but, enough room. Kind of sorry. I mean, there's no room in my stomach. This meal was delicious. <laughs> that was I, very good. I, I love this food. <laughs> this is this, seriously. This is like my favorite list we've ever had. Because <laughs> it's, so it's good. all a good food. But uh, so there we go there. Uh, Zach, which ones do we agree on? All right. Almost none of them. Bake it sell. There were surprisingly, eventually two that we gave a consensus tier one. Could you guess? 
Hamburgers. Hamburgers. Yes. Brats. And brats. Okay. Yeah, hamburgers okay. and brats. There were two. Bean as, haters. <laughs> there were two as well that we gave consensus tier three, which were pasta salad and coleslaw. <laughs> that makes sense, Dad. <laughs> and then just side note, we all gave soda a tier two. Yeah. Okay. Sounds about right. So that's where we agreed. Well, it was actually a decent amount considering who we are. Exactly. But we want to know your thoughts. Do you agree with our rankings? Uh, who did you agree with more? Do you like summer barbecues? Let us know on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Play along with us. We want to see your rankings. And remember, keep it seven tier ones, seven tier twos, and seven tier threes Please. to make it fair because you can't struggle. just give everything a tier one exactly. except for coleslaw. Hey, Joel, what's Snoop Dogg's favorite part of grilling? It's family friendly? It's the sizzle. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> But we want to hear from you <laughs> and let us know about your uh, barbecuing experiences. But before we go, we want to thank a couple of special patron tiers, including the I Am The Listener tier, which has Adam and Rachel Crump, Alicia Bass, Andrew in the Dark, Angela Plotz, Braden Winterton, Casey Cummings, Chris Drought, Debbie Foster, Glow Glenn Daniel, Jake the Cooler King Swallow, Jennifer Kiyokowski, Johnny English the Brick, Lady Terry A. Finley, Way Less Sad, Rocky and Steph, Ryan and Marley, Scott Sprague, Sean Sandquist, Shannon West, and Sir and Madam Hicks. Then, of course, we want to thank our Bacon Council, which includes Allison Gall, Her Royal Highness Jessica Terry, Josh Hansen, Nicole Sitton in the Sin Bin Hale, our favorite couple of the Madsons, Pants, Star Wars expert Kyler, Stephen, everyone's favorite Ross, the one, the only Chris Anderson, and Beaker. Thank you, All right, Thank you. You are the sizzle to our steak. But if you want to find me, you can find me at 76Joel on Twitter. You can find me performing with Quick Wits. They perform at the Midvale Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to qwcomedy.com or go to the Quick Wits Facebook page. If you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram, it's at Kenny3DD. If you want to read my movie reviews, it's showtimeshowdown.com. If you'd like to connect with me, you can do so on Twitter and Instagram at Tumbling Mustard. But more importantly, make sure you follow Bacon Sale. Please like that Facebook page and go to at Bacon Sale on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, you know, comment like the post we like seeing engage it come with us we, we we like it a lot and while you're doing that stop by tpublic.com slash bacon sale where you can get yourself some sweet bacon sale merch so then you can wear a shirt and people can go bacon sale what's that it's a barbecue thing Do you, can i get some and then you're like hey let me yeah, tell you about it it's a podcast to talk about david lynch and barbecues yeah it's fine <laughs> tpublic.com slash bacon sale and then if you like what's going on here on the show and you want to support us further visit patreon.com slash bacon sale where support starts at just three dollars a month you can get yourself access to all sorts of fun content but mostly i'm, I'm telling you an extra show almost every week bacon bits starting at three dollars just do it patreon.com slash bacon sale so until next time that's been the barbecue show boys and grills <laughs> See? September. September. You two. <laughs> Why are you calling us out for dad jokes? You're the one. Okay, your fingies have been too big for that for years. <laughs> so if Joel could travel to multiverses. I'd be going to so many barbecues. You, the um, butterfly effect doesn't affect hot dog eating. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't. I can't do it. I can't. We can do it. My 41-year-old body could not take it. It makes sense. It's historical. Nice. Bruh, mayo on both buns. Grill. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought it was going to be clever. <laughs> I don't know why. They're less thingy. I hate that. The, why the, did I say that? <laughs> the soup. Our independence? No. Nope. Independence day. <laughs> that didn't work. <sighs> Big beans. Mm, Big beans. <laughs> this is a minefield for people's weird family recipe. <laughs> Oh, you lay it on there and you do a little burnout and you just <laughs> <laughs> give me the corn. Cool Slala. The sweet and the beans? Yes. yes. For that moment I had Joel's enthusiasm for beans. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Do Shake not poop water. This is not the time for cookies. Pineapple can be lurking around any corner in a fruit salad. Go we got it. some extra animal parts. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Shove them in a casing, call it done. <laughs> That was a hot dog bait and switch. Goomba. Did you just threaten me and Cleon? <laughs> Nord hey, sheesh. <laughs>